executive summary of the Uncanny Valley. The Uncanny Valley theory suggests that the closer a humanoid entity resembles a real human, the more negative emotion it evokes in people. This phenomenon has implications for artificial intelligence, robotics, and devices designed to serve and assist people. Masahiro Mori first identified the Uncanny Valley in 1970 as the Bukimi no Tani Genshu, which was later translated into English as the Uncanny Valley by Jesse Raycard. The valley describes a drop in affinity towards a humanoid object that would otherwise increase in proportion to its human likeness. As the object's appearance becomes indistinguishable from reality, observers may feel a sense of creepiness or unease. While Mori was not the first person to observe the uncanny valley, he proposed that the negative emotional response occurs at the midpoint between the burly human and fully human appearance. The phenomenon is attributed to violation of human norms mortality reminders, pathogen avoidance, identity challenges, and perceptual discordance. While research has been conducted to overcome the uncanny valley cultural construct, heterogeneous phenomena, and humans' natural familiarity with each other, challenges the scientific explanation of the theory. Overall, the uncanny valley is a phenomenon that has been observed in various domains, with its impact on movies being particularly noteworthy. Theories have been proposed to explain the cognitive mechanisms responsible for the uncanny valley, including the violation of human norms, the salience of mortality, the avoidance of pathogens, the challenge to human identity, and the discord between perceptual cues. Research conducted using monkeys, video games, static images, and neuroscience technique has shed light on the nature of the uncanny valley. Findings suggest that the phenomenon is not solely a product of human culture or cognitive processes unique to humans, but may have evolutionary roots as well. Moreover, studies have highlighted the role of anthropomorphic features of sound and motion in, exuber in exacerbating the uncannies of virtual characters. Further research is needed to fully understand the causes and implication of the uncanny valley in, in movies and other domains. The uncanny valley is a term used to describe a phenomenon in which humanoid robots or virtual characters that are very realistic but not quite perfect evoke a sense of unease or revulsion in humans. The term was first coined in 1970 by Japanese roboticist Masahiro Mori. It suggests that as a robot or virtual character becomes more human-like in its appearance and behavior, our emotional response to it becomes increasingly positive and empathetic. However, at a certain point, if the resemblance is not quite perfect, our emotional response becomes negative and un uncomfortable, creating a valley in our emotional response. This case study highlights the importance of finding the, the right balance between human likeness and artificiality in designing robots and animated characters. While realistic design and movements can enhance the user's experience and emotional attachment to the character, Crossing the line into the uncanny valley can lead to negative emotional responses that can undermine the design's intended purpose. The key problem being faced by the uncanny valley is that it limits the ability of robotics and AI to achieve their full potential. If humans are put off by human-like robots, they may be less willing to interact with them or use them in various applications such as healthcare, education, or entertainment. This could limit the potential benefits that robotics and AI could provide, 
such as increased efficiency, improved safety, or enhanced quality of life. Therefore, researchers are trying to find ways to overcome the uncanny valley and create robots and AI that are more appealing and acceptable, acceptable to humans. So, according to the uncanny valley hypothesis, there is a nonlinear relationship between anthropomorphism and affinity in robots. It claims that by making a robot more human-like in appearance, we can likewise improve our attachment to it. Little is known about the uncanny valley's long-term effects. It is tacitly anticipated that this negative emotional reaction to anthropomorphic technology will have long-term implications, leading people to reject this thing from human androids. Because this assumption has never been validated, it is crucial to investigate an alternate hypothesis in which the uncanny valley may cause a negative emotional response only when the target is novel. So, end of feeling of airiness will vanish during the course of HRI. Additionally, when an android interacts with a human in a friendly manner, the uncanny valley effect might be lessened. If so, the pre-interaction stage may be where the uncanny valley's impacts on HRI are most pronounced. Numerous theories have been put up as to why people feel the uncanny valley effect, but no one theory has gained wide acceptance. While some hypotheses contend that the phenomenon has biological causes, Others contend that cultural factors may also be at play. The following are a few variables that could be involved. Ambiguity. A 2016 study claimed that ambiguity is frequently to blame for the feeling of being creeped out. There is a tension that arises when we observe things that are nearly human but not quite. Sometimes these effects are used to increase the creepiness of horror in a film. For instance, Frighten view to worse, horror movies frequently give human traits to inanimate objects like dolls and clowns. Unrelated components. So additionally, the studies have shown that when elements that don't typically occur together are combined, people tend to become agitated. For instance, a 2011 study indicated that although people are not bothered by robots, with robot sounds or by people with human voices, they are frightened by robots with human voices. This effect is not limited to robots. It also appears in computer animated depictions of people and animals. Inconsistency. People are good at detecting even the smallest discrepancies in a robotic or animated humanoid, even in very realistic renderings. Even tiny differences can transform a persona from lifelike to spooky. In one of Morris' early instances, a robotic character became unlikable and scary when it smiled little too slowly. Survival Reaction According to Morris and others, the uncanny valley is an aversive evolutionary response to the prospective hazards of death and disease. Because something is human-like but not quite lifelike, it may elicit the same reaction as encountering something that is dead or dying. The uncanny valley phenomenon has not received much research, so as time goes on, more knowledge about why it occurs and how to avoid it will undoubtedly become available. In an interview with IEE Spectrum, Mori acknowledged that his initial finding wasn't really meant to be a scientific claim more of a guidance for designers. It's possibly that as technology develops, robots and computer animations could become so lifelike eyes to seamlessly blend with reality, relieving individuals of any discomfort or worry. For the time being, robots, digital avatars, and online animations will continue to become a more ubiquitous part of daily life. Thus, designers must take the audience's emotional response. Uncanny Valley is a phenomenon or theory that suggests that the closer a humanoid entity resembles a real human, 
the more negative emotions it evokes in people. Since humanoid robots are expected to be used more friendly and experienced more comfortably, here are a few recommendations and implementations to lessen the uncanny valley effect or eeriness of humanoid robots to real humans. The implementations can be made through tests, surveys, and training strategies such as video games and engaging humans to the enhanced robots to show the relationship between robots' human likeness and participants' responses towards these robots. With these implementations, stated in here also are the recommendations. First, create robots that can be viewed as trustworthy and have less scary visuals. Second, apply entertaining or synthetic voices to those robots. Third, increase the speed of movement accordingly or limit its emotional expressivity and movement to the upper face. Fourth, a more realism features and emotions in the face as the robots speak. Fifth, create a sizable and diverse image and design to avoid manipulation defects such as heterogeneous and discontinuous stimuli. Lastly, infusing the character with less human-like appearance, for example, a cartoonish style, and more of human-like movement and human-likeness. Conclusion, humans have an innate fear of the unknown and this extends to anything that looks or acts too much like us. The Uncanny Valley is, the well, is a well-documented psychological phenomenon in which people react with fear to entities that are almost but not quite human. This, uh, this can be a problem for humanoids robot because their industry has been striving to perfect the appearance and behavior of their humanoid robots to make them more acceptable and appealing to humans. While the theory was ori originally proposed um, to explain our reactions to humanoid robots, it has, been, uh, it has since been extended to include the computer-generated characters, digital avatars, and even real-life humans with prosthetic limbs or dis um, disfigurements. The key to meditating the negative effects of the uncanny valley is to design humanoid robots, digital avatars, and other lifelike entities in a way that minimizes the ambiguity, inconsistency, and unrelated components that triggers our negative reaction. And also through the recommendations and implement implementation plans given by Ms. Guarte. Additionally, it is important to keep in mind that the effect is more pronounced when we encounter these entities for the first time. With repeated um, exposure, we are likely to become more comfortable with them. As, a, as humanoids robot, um, digital avatars, and other lifelike entities become more prevalent in our society, it is important to understand that um, the psychological effects they may have on us. By taking into account the recommendation put forth in this video, we can minimize the negative, negative impact of the uncanny valley and maximize the positive potential of these technologies.